Welcome back to this Alzheimer's edition of Public Affairs on Peach. I want to welcome Suzette Binford now from the Alzheimer's Association. She is the program director here in the Atlanta office, and thanks for coming in this morning. Well, thanks for having me. Let's start with how someone like you gets involved in this. We were just talking off camera about this. Yes, I've been at the association now for 10 years, um, but prior to that I worked for many years in nursing homes, assisted living facilities. Um, my degree's in counseling, but when I started working with people with dementia, I knew that was, that was my path. All right, so when someone gets diagnosed with Alzheimer's, what should they be doing? What is their first step? Well, I think the number one thing is to get educated about, about the disease. I, I compare it to if you had a diagnosis of um, diabetes, you would want to learn everything you could about diabetes and how to treat it. Um, and it's the same with Alzheimer's. If, unless you've had experience with it in your family, most people really don't know that much about it. So that's job number one, is really to get educated. What do people not know about Alzheimer's? Uh, I think that they think that people are incapacitated um, earlier than they really are. If you catch the, di the disease early, people are, you know, a lot of times you have a conversation with someone with early Alzheimer's and you never really know it. Um, the earlier you get a diagnosis, the, the, the more you're able to plan for the future and, you know, be a participant in the treatment. So I think people don't realize that and they think that, um, you know, people uh, progress at the same rate and it, it, everyone ends up sort of looking the same. And that's really a misconception because the journey is different for everybody. Now you've been around this for two decades, right? So are you able to pick up signs like earlier on than maybe most? And what are some of the signs you're looking for when, when you see that? Yeah, I, I, um, I do. I notice signs in people. Um, and one of the things is difficulty in with language, people losing words, being having trouble expressing what they want to express. Um, and things like Leslie mentioned, people having trouble with their finances is a huge red flag. And also, if they're withdrawing from their activities that they've always enjoyed, at becoming kind of apathetic to that. Somebody that's always loved to go to church doesn't really want to go to church anymore. Those are big red flags. So those are things to look for. So if someone cannot stay home with an Alzheimer's patient, um, are there other options to get help? Yes, absolutely. That's one of the things that we help families with very frequently. Um, we talk about the options, you know, whether, they're, whether we're, we want to look at in-home care, adult daycare, placement in a facility eventually, and we can help families figure out what's the best fit for them and also give them uh, some ammunition questions to ask. If you do call a respite care company, what are the questions that you want to ask to make sure that it's a good fit? Or if you're looking for an adult daycare or a facility, you know, how to make the best choices for those things. We can help people with that. Uh, a lot of people may or may not know that insurance doesn't necessarily cover everything when it comes to Alzheimer's. How do people navigate that? dicey path? You know, Bobby, that's a really good question because this is a very, very expensive disease uh, for families and we really recommend that if, if you have any assets at all and you're embarking on this journey to talk to an elder law attorney because they're really experts in setting up not just your legal um, uh, documents and that sort of thing, your advanced directives, but they can also advise you uh, financially. And I think it's really important to do that early on in the process because you're right, insurance is not going to cover most of, of um, you know, what you're going to be needing. I mean, are there people that prey on this situation as well that you have to kind of be careful of when it comes to your finances and guarding against them? Yes, absolutely. It, there's a cottage industry of people who prey on people with Alzheimer's. Um, they study it and they, they um, set up r really elaborate scams. So that's one What's of the... What's a red flag for one of those? Like, how um, do you avoid that? A red flag would be uh, if you see that your mom is, you know, writing checks to people and she can't really explain what it's for, if it's for some kind of service that has never been done. You know, that would definitely be a red flag for sure. But yeah, there are, there are a lot of people who will, who will prey on people with Alzheimer's. And it, financial exploitation is more common than people realize. And often we see, unfortunately, people going through their life savings mm. before their families really recognize that something is wrong. Tell me about the hotline. The helpline is 24-7. It's a fabulous, fabulous um, service that we offer. Any time of the day or night, 24-7, you can pick up the phone and talk to a trained counselor. And they will meet you where you are and help figure out exactly what you need and set up a plan for you. Um, 
if you're at, if you're up at 3 a.m. and you just need to talk to somebody, uh, you can do that. So it's I think it's our core service, and it can get you also connected with a lot of the other services that we offer. And you can see the number at the bottom of your screen there, 800-272-3900. That's 800-272-3900. Well, Suzette, thank you so much for coming in this morning and, and sharing some of this knowledge to the folks out there who will have to use it someday, whether it's with them or a friend. There's one in nine people over 65 getting the right. disease. All right, thank you very much. Coming up, a personal look at Alzheimer's as we talk to a man who is caring for his wife with the disease. We'll be right back.